What's happening guys? Today we're doing a highly requested video. It's going to be the skills tier list. These are gonna be the skills that are going to be the most valuable when it comes to employment, right? So we're gonna be talking about employable skills. Now some of these skills are going to be skills that teach you how to directly make a lot more money. Some of them are gonna be a little bit more indirect and I'm gonna kinda of go over which ones are which. And I'm loosely basing this off of two things. One of them is the ZipRecruiter Skills Index that I've referenced many times on this channel great resource. That's an index that basically talks about different skills and how much you can expect to make from them. Then also my own personal experience with thousands of hours of doing research and consulting with people. We're going to be ranking these from S tier, which is the best to F tier, which is the worst. And most of these I got from suggestions in the comment section. So if there's some that I missed on this video, let me know. I'll make a follow up video that has a ton more skills. All right, so let's jump right into this one. First one on the list is going to be technology related skills. All right, so on the ZipRecruiter Skills Index, if you look at like the top 30 different types of skills, you're just gonna see it's littered with technology. All different types of programming languages and frameworks, uh, information technology skills, being able to just solve issues. And not only are you going to be able to directly make money from this, AKA it's an employable skill, you know, AKA you can get a job from it, but also indirectly a lot of people who end up becoming millionaires and even billionaires early on in life do it because they have technology related skills so technology via programming is one of the few ways in the world where you can leverage a you know maybe one person or a small group of people the work that they do to get to millions of people you can create a program or a website that millions of people can interact with so an insane amount of leverage uh, you can make a lot of money both directly and indirectly from this um, i suggest that everybody learn at least like some of the basics of computer programming languages because it's really going to help you out in life. This one clearly goes into S tier. Next on the list is going to be health related skills. Now on the ZipRecruiter skills index, uh, this is probably the second most common one that you see at the top. I'd say that it's up there with business related skills, but I would say when it comes to employability and having like a stable job that's pretty much never going to go away, health related skills is probably the best when it comes to directly making money. Now, indirectly, I would say technology and business related skills do have an edge over health. But if you're someone who really just wants a stable job where you're pretty much always going to have employment options, health is a fantastic way to go. So this one is also going to go into S tier. Okay, I realize looking at this list, I feel like a lot of them are going to go into S tier. So I might have to kind of reorganize it at the end. Because uh, yeah, a lot of these are actually really good. You guys came up with really good suggestions. Next on the list is going to be sales related skills. Now this is something where I honestly think the best thing you could ever do for yourself. If you're in high school or college right now watching this video, get a part-time sales job. It is going to help you out just immensely, even if it's just an over the phone, okay? Even if it's just an over the phone sales job, right? Maybe you're introverted, you're too afraid to talk to people in real life. Okay, get a phone sales job. This was probably one of the best decisions I ever made in my entire life. It's gonna change the way that you interact with people. And it's not like some kind of scammy, you know, used car salesman type of skills that you're learning. It's literally just having the emotional intelligence to know, okay, this is what this person wants. It's a lot harder, you know, said than done. And this is how we can come to an agreement where both parties are gonna be happy, right? Sales skills, super, super important. Um, I'm gonna put sales into S tier as well. Sales is not only uh, directly can you make money from it, but also indirectly. It's the most common skill that millionaires and billionaires have. So if you look at past jobs that millionaires and billionaires have, they've actually done studies on this, the most common thing, the one that they notice over and over again, is that they had sales jobs early on in their careers. Next on the list is similar to sales, it's going to be marketing. Now, marketing is kind of like sales, you're gonna be learning a lot of similar skills However, you can use those and leverage it to more people. In my opinion, marketing is a little bit more about understanding kind of broad trends, whereas sales is more about kind of figuring out, you know, specific situations. Like, okay, this person wants this in this specific situation, whereas marketing is just like, okay, we have to show this to like a million people, so what are some broad trends that we can understand? But both of these are incredibly important, and it's something where, in my opinion, if you have experience in this, it's gonna help you in pretty Pretty much every area of your life as well. Um, I would say this one, I'm gonna put it slightly under sales just because, I mean, I wanna put it in S tier, but I'm putting everything in S tier at this point. So 
I'm gonna put it in A tier. Next on the list is going to be leadership and management. Now these are technically separate, but I decided to kind of just put them together. There are not that many good leaders out there in the world and you know, companies, this is something that they try to vet people with, right? Even if you're just going into like an entry level position, uh, HR, hiring managers, uh, people that are you know potentially going to hire you are trying to look to see if you're open to becoming a leader in the future. That's one of the main things that they're looking for a lot of the time. And managers make way more than the average employee yes thank you you will get rich quick we all will and a lot of the time you know getting some experience as a manager within a company is going to help you to start your own business later on down the line a shipping merchant who raises fancy dogs that's the life so this is another one that is just super, super good. Um, I want to put this one in S tier as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it into A tier. You know, management leadership isn't for everyone. Some people just want to, you know, show up, do their job and get their paycheck. And that's totally cool. They just want to do their own thing. They don't want to have to like, you know, worry about all the other stuff. And I totally understand that. Uh, as a manager, you're probably going to have to work a lot more and you're never really off because anybody can just text you or call you at any time. And a lot of the time you're basically on the clock. Next on the list is going to be trade skills. Now, this is something where, in my opinion, uh, you know, maybe if you asked me this 20 or 30 years ago, it wouldn't be as good, but just because of supply and demand, there's not that many people who have trade skills and there's a lot of demand out there for people who have these types of skills. So you can make a lot of money going into the trades. Now, generally speaking, I recommend starting your own business if you go into the trades. There's a lot more advantages to that, but there's just a ton of opportunity out there just because of supply and demand. There's not that many people with these skills anymore, but there's also a lot of downside to going into the trades. It's not for everybody. It can be very tough on your body. A lot of the time, you're not gonna be able to work past like 50 or 60 just because it can uh, cause a lot of wear and tear. So this one, uh, again, I gosh, I think it's really good, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in B tier. Next on the list is mathematics related skills. Now, this is something where, again, supply and demand, not very many people are good at math, uh, even less people, I would say, like math. And so if you're somebody who's good at it and you like it, it's just supply and demand. There's a lot of jobs out there that require you to be really good at mathematics, not that many people to fill the jobs. One thing I will say about getting a degree in mathematics specifically is sometimes it can be a little bit abstract. It doesn't necessarily teach you skills uh, that you need to use in the real world, like employable skills. So you're gonna have to figure out kind of how to supplement that with more employable skills. So for instance, maybe learning some programming. But yeah, mathematics can be great. Just because sometimes it seems a little bit too abstract, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into B tier, but I almost wanna put it into A tier. Next on the list is going to be the skill of learning. Now, this is kind of a weird one, but it's really good for you to learn how to get good at learning, right? The faster you can learn how to quickly get good at learning new skills, the better. And there really is a method to this. Like whenever you're trying to learn a new skill, there's a series of steps that you can go through to learn that skill extremely fast. And I'm not going to go into it in this video, but if you can learn how to get good at learning things really quickly, that's going to help you in every single area of your life, no matter what, you know, career or what, you know, maybe you decide to start a business or anything like that. It doesn't matter what path you go down. So this one is definitely S tier. Next on the list is going to be interpersonal skills. Skills. So uh, this is going to be just like kind of like sales, I guess, very similar to that, just learning how to get good at interacting with other people. And this is all about, you know, being a good teammate, being a good leader if you're in a management position, uh, being good at following. If you're somebody who's in a room and you're, you know, not the most knowledgeable one in the room, then of course, you know, you don't need to always try to be the leader. Sometimes you need to be good at following. So yeah, extremely important. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this one into A tier. Communication, very similar. Um, I would say this also includes like being able to give speeches and just effectively communicate with other people. For instance, what I'm doing right now, making videos, there's so many different ways for you to communicate with people. Uh, super, super important for you to get good at this. It's just something that it's, it's totally worth it for you to practice. And it's one of those evergreen skills that no matter what career path you go down or or even what you're doing in life, maybe, maybe you decide to be like a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad, communication is still going to be important, right? So this one is definitely S tier. Next one on the list is going to be problem solving. So 
This is especially important if you decide to either become like a manager or a leader or an entrepreneur. But even if you don't decide to go down that route, being a good problem solver is going to make you incredibly valuable as an employee as well. You know, if you're somebody who can just solve problems for your boss without it having to go to them and then them having to solve the problem, that is going to make you like their favorite person. So problem solving, fantastic uh, skill to learn. Um, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, I'd say this is definitely S tier, but if you're an employee, maybe A tier, I'd say. Being professional, you know, this one's underrated. Things like just being early, for instance, like not being late to meetings, not being late uh, to work. Being professional is super easy. It doesn't take that long to learn how to be professional. It's, it's really basic and it's just you know, something where you're just being courteous to the people around you. So uh, that's a pretty important one. Um, <laughs> I'll put it in A tier, I guess. It's kind of easy, so I don't think it deserves to be S tier. All right, learning about the history of 17th century French political artwork. You know, colleges would want you to believe that this is S tier and you should, you know, spend all of your money on it and then go to grad school and get a a doctorate, but the truth is it's it's not, it's, it's F tier. When it comes to employable skills, this is definitely F tier. Now, if this is your passion, if 17th century French political artwork is your passion, then that's awesome, okay? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. What I'm saying is when it comes to employable skills, it's not gonna help you out that much. If you wanna do 17th century French political artwork, as a profession, you're going to need to get pretty creative and like start, you know, some kind of online business or something along those lines. So I realize there's nothing in C tier or D tier. Um, yeah, I did not plan this one out very well, guys. So honestly, all of these are so important. It's ridiculous. So I, I guess I'm going to kind of move these around a little bit. Health, I guess I'm going to put that one in A tier just because of the fact that um, it's really solid, but there's not a very high ceiling to it. So like business and technology, for instance, like the ceiling is making millions easily, right? Whereas health, the ceiling is usually a little bit lower than that. Unless you become like a very specialized doctor or something, then you can probably make millions. But honestly, it's kind of comes down to like what you're trying to do and what your goals are. Sales, um, I really love this one. I think it's fantastic, but you don't need this one to be successful. Um, I just think it's a great option for you. And even if you're not trying to go into a sales type career, it just really helps you out. So I guess I'll move that one down to A tier as well. And then communication is important, um, but you don't necessarily need to be good at like giving speeches or making videos or anything like that but it is a great way for you to kind of like leverage yourself again there's there's only certain skills you can use to leverage like one person or a small group of people to get to millions of people right and the the only skills i can think of it really off the top of my head are three and those are you know technology related skills like computer programming, making a website, making a program. Sales slash marketing skills, you can use that to leverage uh, yourself to get to millions of people. And then also communication skills. So like making videos, uh, you know, making a podcast, something along those lines is another way that you can leverage uh, yourself to get to, you know, millions of people. So I'm actually going to put sales in marketing into S tier. And these are really the only ones you can use to leverage yourself into uh, getting to millions of people. And then learning, I'm gonna keep that there too, just because it just helps everything else. Like learning is so important for everything else. Oh, wait, I, I got that wrong. So, so I guess I'll put marketing up there. Yeah, okay, that was the marketing one. This is the leadership one. And I guess I'll put trade skills down in the C tier, not because it's bad, it's just because the ceiling is not as high as a lot of these other ones. Trade skills are still like super good, um, especially, you know, depending on what your goals are. And just to be able to fill out all of them, I'm gonna go ahead and bump this one down, bump math down, and then bump uh, professionalism, just because it's so easy. I mean, like it shouldn't take you long to just, it's just basic, like, like show up early, show up five minutes early to the meetings. I show up 15 minutes early usually. So yeah, there we go. So that's kind of, that's kind of what I did. I bumped 
professionalism down to B, math down to C, trade skills down to D, and then history of 17th century French political artwork down to F. Let me know down in the comments below what skills I should include next time. This was loosely based on what you guys recommended, my own experience, and then ZipRecruiter Skills Index, um, which you should definitely check out. Fantastic resource. If you haven't done it already, go ahead, gently boop that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.